Welcome to a full review of the Audi e-tron Sportback, this SUV coupe cutoff version of the all-electric Audi. Exterior, interior and the EV driving experience is today an Auto Gefühl with Thomas and as you know everything in full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go! In the front we see a strong sporty styling but almost close is this grille because not so much cooling is needed but I think that looks quite fancy and headlamps start with LED optional matrix LED are available an interesting daytime running light definitely S line and adds some sporty features for example also this lower bumper black accentuation is right there for a little sportier look. 4 meters 90, 16 foot 1 or 193 inches is the length of the Audi e-tron Sportback. That's actually the same as the normal Audi e-tron which continues right here. But this one in here with this falling roof line, that's a special thing and the stronger shoulders for a sportier look. The wheel archers are available in black or here in grey, but also painted or painted in the same vehicle color, depending on your choice. The wheels start with 19 inch, with the S line here, 20 inch standard and optional even up to 22 inch, but that is maybe then a reduction in comfort as well. This then here also exterior and interior, both S line for today. It comes standard with the air suspension and it can vary in height about 8 centimeters or 3 inches depending on if you're in off-road mode or in a dynamic mode or if you're driving faster it lowers and in off-road mode slower it goes a little bit higher so really good stuff and in the S-Line however it has a sportier setup you have to be aware of that so if you want the most comfort go for the 19 inch wheels and no S-Line exterior so you have the soft air suspension setup and then you can pick it sportier depending on your wishes. And by the way, I'm not sure if the color code is the same for every market, but in Germany, this color is called Floret Silver. Yeah, that's a very interesting perspective and probably the perspective the car was built for actually, you know, with a falling roof line and so on. And then a small spoiler here in the top part, especially in the S line, and also have the lower contrast here in chrome or silver color and so on like a situation right there and of course this light strip that goes all over the vehicle that's the most prominent design feature here however then here in the straight rear look it looks a little bit bulkier definitely you've seen the number plate by the way who wants to take this one home now on the hood nice gas struts you have two versions basically one is called 50 the other one is called 55 but it's really confusing because it says nothing about what's to come so let's focus battery size either 71 kilowatt hours or today here 95 kilowatt hours and then you have either about 300 horsepower or the other horsepower peak would be about 400 horsepower and excavation figures in around seven seconds or in less than six seconds to 100 kilometers or 62 miles an hour with a powerful version range official figures 350 kilometers or 200 miles or then the bigger version here today 450 kilometers or 250 miles but only if you keep it really steady and here in the front you have a small frank storage for your charging cables and the charge port you open right here that's a cool function here on the driver side AC and DC charger DC up to 150 kilowatt AC 11 kilowatt optional 22 kilowatt and as a nice option you can also get a secondary charger on the co-driver or passenger side then without the DC and in the UK version so ride and drive version would be the other way around when you have this option that you have this on the other side and the main unit on this side here. For 
first of all there is an option for a soft close of the doors like this mm -hmm. but if we want to slam them they still offer a great door closing sound this is the s-line interior soft touch at the inside of the doors here and also a nice alcantara inside and high quality galvanized buttons with clicking sounds for the windows cool s-line entry batch and then there are different seats available. You get for the e-tron and e-tron Sportback a base fabric seat. I would go for that one, save money and also have the best climate comfort. Then there's a sport seat with more bolstering. That is also available in the Alcantara mix, but always some animal parts. And then there's like a multi-contour comfort seat. And this one here, the integrated head restraint S sport seat. And these top two seats, these top for the extra list, they are only available with animal skin leather, or at least with parts here this seat is also available with some Alcantara parts but yeah especially when the electric vehicles tries to be more sustainable you should then stick with the base option and go animal free here the steering wheel with these two gaps special design for the e-tron soon more deals to that what we have there digital instruments you can already see and we'll go into the details there very soon now let's do a nice focus shift from the outside digital mirror to the inside screen hey fancy and yeah, I guess this shot will so get comments of, hey, nice wheels for that Golf 4. Hmm, wait a minute, someone forgot the tripod there. Now getting in the front, not too much difference between the Audi e-tron and the e-tron Sportback, because still with one means 86 or 6 with one, you have a lot of headroom left here. Unless you go for a panoramic roof, then you have a little bit less headroom, but also more light with the dark ceiling here, S-line interior and so on. Yeah, it's really dark than here also in the interior, but Quite comfortable seating, although we have the uh, integrated head restraint sport seats here. The other seats to me, I think, a little bit more comfortable. And as I said earlier, just stick with the base seats because they also offer the fabric function and they are also just fine as for the comfort. And the price is also too high with all the options we have here. I'll soon give you uh, later the total price of this test vehicle here and it's really like, whew, whoa. <laughs> so this, the steering wheel up and down and in and out, electric function here so you can find a good comfortable position and also electric control here for the seat with two memory buttons as well so you can set it for two different drivers and the manual and lengthment of the lower area so overall i think quite open cockpit atmosphere let's tune into more details 12.3 10.1 8.6 inches each that's the screen setup and looks everything very clean and organized yeah, horizontal stress, soft touch dashboard right here, and also this, you know, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> this insert, horizontal, interesting, e-tron, this can also be illuminated at night, soon get into the ambient lighting and so on. This one and also special material here, um, it's also some kind of soft, but a lot of black piano lacquer, that's mm, not my favorite. Soon more to the individual screens, just want to show you once you know, already right here. This is here how the temperature reacts. You can click either or like, like this or scroll. It's somewhat okay for a screen input, but of course menu dials would be safer while driving. You can also use voice input. Set temperature to 23 degrees. I'll increase the temperature to 23 degrees. So that's also working, so that would be an alternative for, you know, when you are driving. And also these screens are interacting. For example, here when you are in the GPS menu, then in the lower part, for example, you can write either single letters mm -hmm. or you can directly write a couple of letters here like this, <laughs> for like B, Erlen, Berlin. And then it's also appearing in the top part, but you can also use the voice input for that. So soon more, more the details to the interior screens. Then the steering wheel, I think it's quite huge, but S-line, so a little sportier style, right side then for the volume. We can also then hear the B&O sound system and wow, there's such a clear sound. Apple CarPlay integration right here, wow. Nice uh, album by the way here, more of the album. Wow, cool. This is a really great sound. And seen here, the Apple CarPlay integration is nicely done, goes all the way over the screen. You can always hop back to the Audi MMI. 
CarPlay also works in a wireless way, by the way, but I prefer it with a cable and Android Auto with a cable. Then, left side of the steering wheel, you control the digital instruments. Zoom so into that. Also, more details to the screens here, the digital mirrors from the inside. Lower part, you can activate also the camera button, and you have the rear view camera here, by the way. Great resolution. And then the shifting lever is kind of strange. You pull backwards like this for the gear, forward for the reverse, P at the side, at least nice clicking sounds. And then this open area right here in the lower part. <sighs> Why? They said ah, it's like a floating area, but no, it's not floating. It doesn't look like it. It just looks unfinished, you know, and then some cup holders in there, smartphone right there. Not sure what to make use of it. And then two USB, normal A chargers, cover here for the armrest, raise it up and some more space, for example, for your auto fuel lanyard. Don't you have one? And here we are with the digital instruments. You can also see this, uh, this one here is not an unrealistic fuel consumption or energy consumption in this case. So it is not a very efficient electric drive. That's, you know, that's the thing, sumo to range and uh, efficiency and so on when we drive the vehicle. What's cool with the digital instruments, you have the different views you can set here. Um, it, of course, makes small sense when you have the map mounted and you can go all the way with the map here on the screen and zoom in and out with your thumb. One of the best virtual instruments here by Audi, I think. And about these digital mirrors, you can see it's placed rather low inside the vehicle, so you have to look down a little bit. And um, then you can control either this here, for example, up and down, also left and right, and so on. Or then click here, and then you actually adjust from here the other screen at the passenger side. And now more details to the screens. Here again, you can see how I can change the camera. Again, sliding is actually the easiest way to do that. Also seat heating activation in the lower part. And in the top part, let's take a detailed look here at the GPS map. You can get it also with the satellite view and that looks very impressive, pretty cool. And it's also decently fast. They have a good uh, processor unit here in this vehicle. Once again, the Apple CarPlay, how the integration is done. So everything quite fast. And it's important that you set here in the display settings, the MMI, the haptical feedback touchscreen have feedback to off because otherwise when you have it activated you always have like clicking with the smartphone doesn't work you always have like bam bam and why would they offer such a feature anyway who wants to do that so i always deactivate that you can just click it on the screen like you're used to from your smartphone like any other touchscreen hmm useless feature so deactivate it at once so they're always faster than of course car details here you can look at a lot of uh, different things for example also um, yeah, battery level and so on um, or when the charging is active what's always interesting is as well the how the drive select because the air suspension is for example raising when you are in the off-road mode if you decide to go off road with the vehicle or in dynamic mode, it's also going down. So it's changing the level and you can also see that in this menu. So overall, I think a very clear infotainment system, easy to learn, easy to access. Yeah, the split with the climate controls, okay. But for a digital climate control, it's among the best, I think. While driving, still doubtful. And the ambient lighting, for example, in the lower middle console, that's already quite cool. I would say the blue, of course, but you have different colors. And here the top area above the screen is also where you can very well see these different colors. And what's also nice is here the frameless back mirror. Now getting in the rear, shoe tap and with one minute 86 or 6 with one. First of all, plenty of leg room left here when I have the seat to my driving position. Good result. Then also headroom wise, that's still okay, although we're in the sport bag. What do we lose in the sport bag in comparison to the normal e-tron SUV? about two centimeters or an inch and headroom. I can also go a little bit further back with my head and it still works so tall people can sit in the rear. So the sport back version is not such a big compromise. Inside the Dorsey, by the way, is a rather hard pack. 
maybe a little bit softened up, but not too much, but nice Alcantara used in the lower part. So a very comfortable seating position here as for the rear. There's isofix at the outside of the seats. You already can flip the seats from here. Then in the middle part here, you can flip down cup holders and they are also nicely adaptive. More than that, you can also use it as a ski hatch. What about this middle seating part? Well, there's this climate unit, really large, so they're not really using the potential of the EV um, to sit in the middle part. And also the middle part is rather higher, more a single seat setup. So you can sit here as a tall person, but not really optimized for that. However, the rear climate unit, also an option, is quite cool. So you can also have seat heating for the seats and so on, um, look quite fancy. And in the lower part, two more USB-A supplies. And another fancy feature, illuminated seat belt sockets. And the trunk area, instead of 600 liters, you have 555 here in the sportback version of the e-tron, so a little bit more limited here in the height, but you still get along with it quite well, not such a high loading sill. The standard trolley also fits in in a vertical way, maybe push it like this, and then it's fine, actually. Then below this area here, you have even more space. So actually quite a lot of space goes quite deep in there. That's quite cool. You can also store your cables in the back then if you prefer that. The width here is actually a little bit more than a meter. The normal trunk length is one meters and eight. And the height here to the cover, that's always a very important thing, is about 50 centimeters. The loading seal here, by the way, this is actually quite high. So like how high the trunk is from the ground is about 80 centimeter. That's actually quite high. And then to flip the seats, there's sadly no possibility here. So you have to go around and then do it once again from here. And there we are. So and you can also use the ski hatch that would be possible just for the middle part. Other than that, here to the front seats, you can almost get two meters. Be aware that this hatch is opening really high. I have limited at the moment the, you know, the opening process to the basement garage. So it would actually go like this, that's the maximum. But as I showed you, you can also save the position then on how you want it to be opened so that it stays, for example, like here. And it's just an easy solution. Press the opening button and hold it. And then you hear a little sound and then it's actually safe in this position. And child safety test. Whoa, this has too much torque than for clothes. That can get a little bit dangerous. Welcome here to Thomas's driving lounge with the Audi e-tron Sportback. Of course, all electric driving and it's always a pleasure. And I um, can just repeat, driving electric vehicles, no matter if you like the average car customer, if you like performance cars, if you like comfortable cars, just from a driving experience alone, the electric vehicles are indeed always better. Besides, when you have pleasure hearing like a V6, V8 sound and so on. That's the only thing. But if you look at everything else, the electric vehicles really deliver you the best driving experience. You have a very spontaneous acceleration, the speed is always there. Then you have so much silence in here, especially if you have like a sophisticated Audi big SUV here with the optional sound insulation pack, which we also have in this vehicle. And it's super, super silent in here. And together then with the electric drive, so maybe uh, you hear that, um, how the, the rubber that is on the brake pedal um, reacts with the rubber under my shoes. And that's of course a safety thing, you know that you have good grip on the pedal, but you only hear that because everything else is so silent in here. And that's really cool. The steering wheel could be a little bit smaller, I think, you know, just on one note, S-Line exterior and interior package here. And it's just a pleasure driving this vehicle, so relaxed and so cool. You don't have the highest sitting feeling here. The Audi e-tron Sportback is something like, say, in between worlds, but overall, it's more definitely an SUV driving feeling, I think. Good overview to the front, to the sides, a pretty strong B pillars, so um, blind spot monitor is definitely very helpful. And they are integrated here in these digital mirrors. Again, you do 
do not have to go for the digital mirrors. It's an option right here and I still think it's not a useful one because when you look here, that would be my view to the side mirror like this. I'm not sure if you can see it on camera and to the view here to the screens would be like this. So it's like, you know, not this, but this. So you will look more down and I think that's irritating you. It's not, you cannot switch that fast to the front again. It's not that intuitive and just how, you know, how the brain is being programmed, you know. We are very used with mirrors and so on. And even if you get used to this, I've been testing it at bright daytime, really a lot of sunshine and also at night and at both situations it was really really bad. So I think it's not a technological advancement here to have the digital mirrors. It's just playing around with technology without a real use. I think it's a dangerous technology, period. So that's my take on it from my experience. Maybe you're the biggest fan of it, then feel free to explain that to me. But once again, driving this one here is so flawless. We have the air suspension, 20 inch wheels mounted. I think that's still somewhat of a compromise. I would not go bigger. Better even for comfort, of course, if you go with 19 inch, for example, or even smaller. Always depends then how is this, the trade off between the looks and, and the comfort. This one here, the e tron Sportback, does not really drive differently from the normal Audi e tron. It's just that we have the rear a little bit you know, cut off. It's like the Beetle X5 versus X6. Usually the Sportback variants here are tuned a little bit stiffer, sportier. I wouldn't deny that. Maybe that's the case here. Um, it's not that you would feel a huge difference, but both Etron and Etron Sportback deliver an awesome ride. Both have a good compromise between comfort and sportiness. We'll soon head out onto the motorway and tell you more about that. Now, going downhill about recuperation, I can just leave the foot of the throttle and then use the brake pedal that I see charging here in the digital instruments. So the recuperation in 90% of the cases in everyday driving life, recuperation is being used instead of the normal brakes, Audi says. And I can just confirm that looking at the instruments and also general electric driving experience. The other thing you can do is also change the recuperation here with the pedals. So when I use the left shifting pedal, so to say, I can increase recuperation. So when I lift my foot off the throttle, there's more recuperation and it's more coming closer to a one pedal feeling and driving. But that's not the Audi philosophy as for the electric vehicles, not like Tesla with very strong acceleration and so on. So here, uh, whoa, 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 damn traffic announcements, I hate that. Ah. Need to um, put, the <laughs> put the sound volume on the traffic announcement a little bit down then that you are not like, you know, absolutely surprised by that. Maybe like with headphones on, listening to the videos and so on. So again, about the recuperation going down here now, here twice, and then we can recuperate more. But the thing is, when I accelerate and then lift my foot again, it's gone. So it's not a permanent setting, at least from what I can do here. It's like zeroed out. So that shows that their philosophy is rather rolling and rather using the brakes, mm, rather feeling like a normal car, combustion engine car, maybe then even, yeah, without engine brake. Um, yeah. Maybe I think they should have offered more recuperation, or let's say that the recuperation, for example, stays when you're used to shifting pedals right here. Um, the electric consumption so far here, when you really keep it you know, slowly and steady and so on, you can score something like or even below 20 kilowatt hours on one kilometers. And that then, you know, yeah, by that you can also reach this official range figure of 450 kilometers or 250 miles. So it is possible, just depends on how fast you drive. So about that, let's go to the dynamic mode that we have a little bit more boost, 60 to 80. That's it. 
that was already 60 to 90 almost. So you always have the torque right there, great acceleration. Um, that's just so flawless. So really, really cool. Um, about the realistic range, again, so that would be like the maximum figure if you really keep, for example, steady on the motorway, um, use the recuperation a lot, don't have like harsh accelerations. And the more realistic one is, yeah, I mean, we've been driving also with a little bit more speed in our um, earlier test and that was then more consumption figures of about 25 kilowatt hours on more kilometers. And that then would be more like something between 300 and 400 kilometers and something between 200 and 250 miles. Hmm. Yeah. You can definitely tune that yourself a little bit how you drive and how fast you drive. When you go like really high speed on the motorway, it will diminish. But then again, I always say, when the thought of having like 50 kilometers or 25 miles more or less range in electric vehicle. If that's the crucial buying argument, then obviously an electric vehicle is not something for you yet. So don't expect it to be a salesman car where you go like 40,000 kilometers or 25,000 miles a year. That's not how it's intended to be. It's more like, you know, as most people do not drive that much daily, and then it's actually quite fine here, still from range. Although Tesla is definitely leading this one as for the range. But as for the calmness in the right here and the driving dynamics and the feeling here, steering feeling is very good. I have great control of the car. Um, it just delivers you, once again, a, a flawless driving feeling. That's the best way to describe it. That's among the best one on the market overall. So as for the segment, like this, you know, let's say grown up cars. <laughs> um, here, the Audi each one delivers one of the best driving feelings from the overall mix. And considering the all wheel drive technology here, which has 40% front, 6% rear as a base setup, but since both axles, electric motors, are completely independent as for the hardware, they can just be tuned software wise and you can send as much power to each axle, you know, just as you want. It's actually no problem and we've been testing the all-wheel drive also on a sand flat and that was just amazing so this car feels smaller than it actually is because of the agility from this all-wheel drive that's definitely pretty cool now the cruise control sitting at 2.1 kilometers now at 60 miles an hour again just so silent in here really to enjoy I'll go back to the auto mode just right here. Then let's test the lane keeping assist. Sophisticated system in here. Um, to get the best one, you need to pay some options. Yeah, we know that from Audi. 116,000 euros is the total price of this very test vehicle with all the options spec. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Your lane keeping assist in doing a very good job and also very smooth transition. So there was no real effort, you know, there was no, I would say, oh, that feels unnatural. So the assistance systems here are really top notch. Cannot say something else about it. You know, again, recuperation. And I see the charging of the recuperation is not entirely full. So that means I'm still all in the recuperation range before the real brakes would have been applied. Can I fit there? It stands a little bit more than the middle, right? So we are stopping right now here and getting onto the motorway once again to show you real acceleration, like all the way through. Um, you know, we have the short electric boost available and zero to 100 kilometers or 62 miles now is below six seconds with this 55 quattro version here has about like the maximum peak horsepower output is about 400 horsepower it's of course more than enough and as dynamic mode just rolling here we do a rolling start it's always a little bit safer here we are in public traffic after all so let's see and we go from about 30 kilometers an hour and let's go
that's 200 kilometers now or one or two and a half miles now. You see, like the last bits, that was slower than you would have with a performance combustion engine. But the acceleration before that, especially in the lower speed areas, superb. And again, driving 190 kilometers an hour now, and it's so silent in here. And we're not hearing any engine sound that would actually cover um, something or so. We just hear wind noises. That's something like a little bit biased them with the electric vehicles sometimes. Um, really so well done, great insulation. And also how stable the car is here at higher speeds. That's really great. Now on the brakes, good feeling here. But still, most of that was done again, once again, by recuperation. By the way, if you have the adaptive cruise control set, there is more recuperation because the adaptive cruise control combined with this predictive function knows oh, when the next traffic sign is changing speed or if there's an intersection coming or something. And then the adaptive cruise control reduces the speed, but then by recuperation again, so this is another very helpful feature that can also reduce um, consumption and so on. So pretty impressive here once again. And this car delivers you basically everything you need, you know. So um, if I now compare it to the um, combustion competitors or so, the only thing that really set them apart is that they have a higher range overall, you know, when you're really doing long trips. But if long trips is not an issue for you, then the electric solution will actually deliver you more fun. And, of course, if your charging infrastructure is there, and that is actually, to me, I think the biggest problem of electric mobility, the charging infrastructure, when you have your setup at home and you're perfectly fine, like with your own house or something, you're all good. Go for electric. If not, it's still a problem, definitely. But from the driving experience alone, such a great ride, I can just stress it again. Also the all-wheel drive, how it's just distributed on the ground, that gives you such a natural feeling somehow, although it's totally artificial, you know what I mean? So I think they've really done a good job at tuning the all-wheel drive and so on. By the way, when I was entering the motorway, um, usually I look through normal mirrors and I just see the cars bigger in there when I look through the normal mirrors and have more safe feeling, like when can I enter the motorway? So maybe you've seen me while I was preparing the acceleration and I was mainly handling that by the top mirror because I trust in that even more and even if I would be like totally non-biased and I was actually non-biased to this technology I was like cool there's something new let's experience it I'm really so open to new technologies and say like let's really rate what is useful for the customer but when you see then that it's like where is the car supposed to be that is approaching there? It's so tiny in there. Again, I really still wonder why this is allowed at all, you know? This shouldn't be allowed in this way. And there are more cars coming up with that feature. Also, in a way, better solutions if you think about the Honda e, where the screen is right here. So you don't have to watch so much to the side. That could be a safety gain, definitely. But yet again, I still think just a normal mirror will be safer. And I also have to say the EU setup is better. So um, yeah, some regulations are cooler in the US definitely that you can have like illuminated Mercedes star in the front cars, for example. Uh, but then again, the US mirrors where you have this, let's say zoomed in view on the driver's side mirror, that's also pretty irritating. It doesn't give you such a good overview. You know, so I think the mirrors, like the mirror setups, the laws for mirrors we have in, in the EU are actually a little bit more suitable in this case then. Once again, wow, so silent in here, so great. And always when I enter the, the, like the motorway or something, I have like a little feeling of insecurity. However, blind spot monitor here, it shows me like a yellow line around um, the, the screen then. That's definitely very good. So. I mean, I would rather than rely on the blind spot monitor that is shown inside the screen than my actually view to the monitor. And yeah, that's, um, that definitely tells us something. So once again, here in the tunnel, you can also see how it looks like at night with a nice ambient lighting right there with a nice light, nice light strip. Of course, you can tune that to your liking. And by the way, so today it's clouded outside, so in this situation 
there is like for cameras and stuff, also for our film camera, it's great. You don't have like hard light, there are no big shadows and so on. The, the light is very soft, so at the moment when you see the images of the side mirrors here on the camera, it looks really great, but it will be even worse when there are other weather conditions. So, once again, let's just remain in the auto mode now for a second, because probably won't change driving modes all the time, and also changing them while driving below here, also not a very practical solution. So, let's do 100 kilometers now to, let's say, 150. Let's see how that one plays out. Plop. Whoa. Plop, that's it, and really good, great performance. And now let's put it to a motorway speed, which would be very realistic also for a lot of countries still. Um, let's say 130 kilometers an hour. So that's like, okay, 70, 80 miles an hour test. Uh, sorry, uh, wait a minute. One kilometer is 62 miles an hour. So that that's more like a, yeah, yeah so something between 70 and 80 miles indeed, yeah. I <laughs> got that. So, and it's a great motorway speed and very stable on the road. This, the air suspension, again, keeps this good balance between comfort and sportiness. And I feel then driving-wise, besides the mirrors, very secure on the road. So, very good balance of this vehicle. Predictive cruise control now already realized that the speed is being reduced. So, the speed was reduced in advance to, again, save, not save fuel, save energy. So also very good system, you can relax, and this also definitely reduces some speeding tickets. <laughs> Not that I would have ever gotten one. Just to mention, yeah. <laughs> so once again, here in the now 100 kilometers or 62 miles an hour on the motorway, which is probably an even more usual motorway speed in a lot of countries, in a lot of motorway parts. And that is, of course, even better here again lane keeping assist, keeping the car in a lane barrier, even in a like sharper corner. Of course, you have to keep your hands on the steering wheel all the time. That's how the system is meant to be or meant to do it, just then for demonstration purposes. And really feeling so much at home in this vehicle. I can just stress it again. So a longer journey, let's say you're comparing a Tesla Model X, comfort-wise and noise installation-wise, would be better here in the Audi e-tron or e-tron Sportback. But range-wise, it would be better in the Tesla Model X. So it depends on how long the journey is. And of course, Tesla already has the better supercharging infrastructure. This car is also capable of supercharging, like a lot of power already DC. But then again, you need the um, you know respective infrastructure. They're building this Ionity network in Europe, for example. I think it was Charge America in the US called. Yeah. Um, but this definitely needs needs to you know needs to step up the game that you can also use it then sometimes for for longer journeys definitely. But that's that's all coming bit by bit. So far, however, I really have to say, rather rely on the electric vehicles when you can really charge them easily at home, and then you're actually fine with that. So I hope you really enjoyed our impressions here today from the Audi e-tron Sportback. So please leave us your comments. And yeah, you maybe are also, you ask me, Mercedes EQC, that electric vehicle by Mercedes, is also definitely a great ride. However, from the whole concept, driving feeling, um, yeah, the EQC delivers more high finish interior annual free versions. That's where they are leading, indeed, among the German manufacturers. Tesla, of course, going all animal free now, not for a couple of um, couple, couple of years now. Not all models, and no, not including the steering wheel, but I um, think meanwhile they should have done that also, at least for Model 3, it's, that's, that's the case, and for the other models you can get it, but it, it's bit by bit standard now that they're all animal free. Of course, even more important because um, the customers of electric vehicles are not all, you know, but more are already more environmental savvy and have the connection, you know, that when you love animals, you also should not buy animal skin and so on. 
so that's coming bit by bit. Audi is really lagging behind as for this. So they're always saying like, oh, we're so sustainable, blah, blah, blah. And then when you really look at that and it's like, wait a minute, what's with that? What's with that? What's with that? So with Audi, yeah, really have to look at the you know <laughs> small details. So they're really lagging behind as for sustainability issues. But other things they can do very well. And for example, as I said, once again, and that's also probably the conclusion of the driving part, the balance between comfort and sportiness here is just superb in this vehicle. And now to the conclusion for today with the Audi e-tron Sportback. First of all, exterior-wise, pretty aggressive front and, yeah, I mean, pretty fancy. I think the side profile is just matter of preference if you rather prefer the normal upright style or this SUV coupe style. So tell me in the comments which one would you go for, but I think it's the same question of, for example, BMW X5 versus X6. You know, some like this styling and some others really hate it. It's really polarizing this SUV coupe form. Also depends a little bit on the wheel choices as well. And the color here is pretty interesting, but of course not the most daring color that is possible. Driving wise, it's really such a flawless vehicle. It offers such a great combination of sportiness and comfort due to this electric drive. You have the silence on the one hand, then the performance on the other hand and together also with the optional insulation package, which is a really good thing. So such a silent vehicle, one of the most silent cars overall, also at higher speeds. And the driving experience is so well done. So I really love it about this vehicle and of course in general about electric vehicles, but here the comfort you get and the sportiness at the same time is really at a very, very high level. Range, however, the pure electric range is not at a very, very high level, so they could do a little bit more to that because it's not the most efficient car if you look at the energy consumption. And what's also missing when we talk about efficiency or sustainability are animal skin alternatives in the higher seating trim levels. Overall, a very interesting car and an awesome drive. Tune into more EV episodes with the Audi e-tron without the Sportback, for example, Tesla Model X, Mercedes EQC, so we have a lot of different other electric vehicles you can also tune into. See you there or at one of our next full reviews. Stay tuned, stay subscribed. Thank you so much for tuning in.